These brushes are clean, brothers and sisters. They are clean. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, everybody. You know, I've been requested to make an episode about uh, brush care, watercolor brush care, and we're going to take a minute to do that. Uh, I've got several tips and things. You know, we're really pretty lucky as watercolorists because there's not a lot you need to do or worry about with watercolor. It's always water soluble. It usually is not tough on the brushes. It's very mild and, and non-caustic and that sort of thing. So there's not a lot you can do, not a lot you need to do, but there are some things to consider and I want to cover that. Right, buddy? Everybody give it up for my studio assistant, Reese. You never clean your brushes? What brushes? You never clean anything, do you? Well, as I said, we're kind of lucky in the watercolor world that uh, we don't have to fuss with our brushes too much when we're cleaning them. Um, mainly because uh, watercolor is water soluble. And if you're an acrylic painter or an oil painter, you know, uh, you can easily get dried paint in your brush and it needs something pretty rigorous to get it out. When you're washing your brushes, really you only need water and beyond that, the only thing that you really need or might want to use beside that is just a mild hand soap. And for years that's all I've been using. Um, this is uh, just a sample bar of ivory soap. It's very mild on the hands. If it's okay for your hands, it's going to be okay for the hair of your brushes. And the way that I wash a brush, and again, I do not wash my brushes. I, this is one of the things I wanted to be clear about because I've been asked this question. I do not wash my brushes after every use. With watercolor is just not necessary. To be frank, I probably only do it maybe four or five times a year. Uh, if it's a brush that's been put away and I haven't used it in a while, I don't know what kind of color or residue is in there and might loosen up. So a lot of times if it's a brush I haven't used in a while, you know, then I may wash it. But all you need is clean water. I usually use my hand. I had a teacher that taught me to do that and I still like to do that. Um, just get it real wet and you can a lot of times see what comes out of your brush just with water. Uh, and there's some green in this brush. I'll give it a few swipes on hand soap and swirl it around. Start getting up the suds. Uh, you can see I'm getting a little more than I was before. The important part, just as with acrylic and oils, the important part of washing a, a watercolor brush is getting the color that's down here in the ferrule, down next to the ferrule, because as you paint, you know, and as you put pressure on the brush, you're forcing paint down in there. So you want to get it all the way down here. So that's the reason you you swish it around like this. And you can see now uh, I'm getting quite a lot of green out of there that I wasn't getting before. But generally, a little bit of dried watercolor in your brush does not hurt the performance of them. Now what does matter is, is shaping, and we'll get to that in a minute. Now let's talk about cleaners for a minute. This right here is a very popular cleaner. Uh, I have this uh, because I have in the past done a good bit of oil painting and acrylic painting. And this stuff is really good. It's a brush cleaner preservative called the Masters. I've recommended, to, I've recommended it to a lot of you viewers. The difference in this, it is a soap, but it has a little bit of an abrasive in it. Now you can use this on watercolor brushes, but I really would be careful with it. And I have these brushes lined up here because I wanted you to see. Uh, this is a silver brush black velvet. Uh, as many of you know, this is my favorite, one of my favorite brushes. The black velvets are made with a blend of synthetic and squirrel hair. Now synthetic is, is pretty resilient, but squirrel hair is fairly limp. It's very fine. So squirrel wears out. As a matter of fact, there are some brushes like this Da Vinci Quill that are made out completely out of squirrel hair. Now any brush that I have that has squirrel in it, I'm careful with. I don't use something like this. I don't use anything that's got an abrasive in it. I just use this. That's all I ever need. However, if it's something a little more resilient, now this is a, an Escoda Reserva Kalinsky Sable. Um, and honestly, uh, 
I wouldn't even use the abrasive on this, although I think you can. Uh, Kalansky Sable is a little bit hardier than Squirrel, but still, it's an expensive natural hair. You don't need the abrasive action to clean it out. So again, I use the soap method, but it, a little bit doesn't hurt. You can get some in here. And um, the instructions for the Bastards uh, just has you kind of swirl it in here. I think that's really more for an acrylic brush than it is uh, for a watercolor. Uh, because again, I try to be very sparing with the use of an abrasive. So I may give it one swirl with, with that stuff. Just very, very occasionally. I'm getting kind of a gray. You can tell there's paint down in there. And if you want to really make sure your your brushes are clean, I think for a second pass I'm just going to go for the soap. Just keep doing this until your suds look like clear water and you don't see any color or tone in them at all. And I think I'm pretty much already there. I have a clear, clean brush. Now synthetics you don't have to be quite as fussy with. Uh, this is a fine synthetic meant to imitate Squirrel. This is the Princeton Neptune but it's got more snap to it and it's not quite as limp as squirrel. I think either one of these would work. Again, uh, I would always try soap first and just see what's in there. I do have some, looks like some reddish or brown paint in there. Again, I don't use much of this if if at all. I'm going to put a little on there just to see if I get anything more and I'm really not. My brush a good rinse. I'll try one more time. And I'm pushing, I'm not pushing hard but I'm, I'm pushing all the way down to the ferrule just to work that soap down in there. And I think that brush is clean. Okay. Now lastly I have a 100% Synthetic. This is like Da Vinci Cosmotop, and it's one of the snappiest, springiest brushes I have. Very resilient, very tough. You can pretty much use either of these, and um, it won't hurt. Now, I, I say it won't hurt again, probably if you use this abrasive cleaner every day or after every time you painted, you might eventually fray the ends and wear out your brush. But you just don't need to do that with watercolor brushes. You just don't need to wash them after every use. Just a good rinse under the faucet or in your water bucket if you have clean water. There's not much paint in this one. So that's cleaning. Um, once in a while, after uh, a painting, for instance, if a painting has taken you, you know, a number of days or weeks, you know, or if you're going to be away from painting for a while. Um, you, you can find your own kind of time period to do it. You just don't have to fuss a lot with cleaning watercolor brushes beyond water. A little soap does does the job. Now, uh, what I think is more important with watercolor brushes is keeping their shape. Let me see if I can show you this, this uh, up close. Alright, now I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's, uh, this brush is wet kind of sticking out from it or a couple of what look like frayed or stray hairs. It doesn't help that this has squirrel in it because of how limp that is but that tends to happen. Especially down here at the bottom a lot of times you'll get brushes where the hair sticks out to the side. So I would say in addition to cleaning uh, the most important thing you can do after that is shape your brushes because Really no other medium uses as many soft brushes as watercolor does. So let's look at, at ways to do that. First of all, uh, the soap actually works as a mild shaper. Um, once you're done cleaning your brush, just coat it with soap. That's the most cost effective if you don't want to go out and buy anything special. And usually what I do with a damp brush is I'll just take and form it. And just pull that into a nice point. And I'll try, I'm not 
having my success there is kind of a stray. I'll try to put all the, the stray kind of frayed hairs or the ones sticking out in odd directions. I'll try to get them all back in line. A good mild hand soap like this, uh, it will keep the hair conditioned. And you don't really have to condition it, but um, it, it doesn't hurt. And when this dries, it will be relatively stiff, okay? The second is this, uh, the masters that we talked about that had a mild abrasive in it. It also is, can, it is also formulated to be a conditioner and a preserver. So um, you do the same thing, just like a soap. And this is the Kalinsky Sable. And usually I just, I'll roll it in there, take out the excess water, roll it back in there again. I'll take a look at it, make sure there are no strays. A good, a good Kalinsky Sable usually has the best point of any brush. So I just make sure that thing goes down to like a needle. Okay. So the master's brush cleaner works for doing that too, double duty. Now in addition to that, if you if you have a cleaner you can use other products. Uh, this right here is just a cheap two dollar men's hair gel with maximum hole. That works. Um, I did this rosemary Kalinsky sable with it. Um, I worked it into the bristle. After cleaning the brush, I worked it into the bristles and then coated the outside. Um, and you get a nice, stiff, nicely formed point. Okay. If, it's, if it's okay for hair, it's perfect for human hair, it's a perfectly okay for a fine Kalinsky sable. Okay. Then, if you want to spend the bucks, there's something like this. It's called Brush Shaper. This is uh, a little bit pricey. It's about seven bucks. I actually, I think on Amazon it's it's less. And all you do is once you clean your brush, you dip it in there. And I've formed this one. All three of these I have formed with Brush Shaper. And it is really hard. I mean, it almost puts a shell on these points. See, this this rigger here, this black velvet rigger, and I really want to keep the shape of my riggers. Um, that's almost like a needle down here in the point. That's how hard this stuff dries. It's, it's far harder even than the, the hair gel, the maximum mold hair gel. Uh, this is a another rosemary, Kalinsky. Uh, one of my bigger Kalinskis, uh, kind of expensive brush, so I formed that with the brush shaper. Again, very hard, almost like you dipped it in a shellac. That's a good way to store brushes, by the way. If you want to store brushes and let them roll around in a drawer and not have your points mash up against something else, um, the brush shaper is a good way to go. A lot of times, um, brush companies, when they send you brushes through the mail, a lot of times they'll be coated with something like that. You know, these, uh, coating your brushes and shaping them with this, they will dry fairly stiff, but not nearly as hard. So it's all just kind of a matter of degree. If you're on a budget, uh, water and a little bar of, of mild hand soap like this is all you ever really need. Now, um, when you go to paint, it's going to be very important that you clean these brushes out. So what I would recommend you do is take these, uh, especially the ones that have shaper in it, and clean them again. Use some soap. Go, I wouldn't even go in here because the, in your water bucket, the stuff that comes out of your brush will stay in your paint water. So take it to a sink. Just basically give your brush a good shampoo with soap. Uh, and then a good rinse to get all of that brush shaper out of there, okay? And then you can start painting. I don't do anything special with my brushes. Mo most of them I store flat. If they're dry, I store them upright in 
cans and cups and that sort of thing. Just be careful if you store a brush flat, if it's in a drawer, that you store it where it's it's going to roll this way and it's not going to get uh, mashed up against something this way and start destroying those points. Again, because we watercolors use mostly softer brushes, uh, points are in form of the brush is the easy thing to go. It's the first thing and the easiest thing to go and carry for a brush. Hope that gives you a few tips. Thank you everybody for watching. Thanks so much patrons for supporting. All your support has just been fantastic and it's just enabling me to do these episodes for you. And we will see everybody in the next video.